Hey guys, so there are a few videos that I am recording again because um, I, when I recorded them, I was in a bad moment in my life and so I didn't have a lot of self-esteem and uh, I was basically around the house all the time. I didn't dress well. And so I was basically at home and I had a lot of cleavage. I was barely just wearing a tank top because <laughs> it was, first it was extremely hot. There were wildfires all around and uh, I was just home and I didn't have a lot of self-awareness. I just thought I was irrelevant and um, didn't have much self-esteem didn't care and didn't think uh, much of myself so i basically even i even <laughs> had one video where i wore a pajamas and <laughs> granted i didn't have cleavage in that one but uh it was all due to a lack of self-esteem i didn't have my hair groomed and so I deleted a lot of those videos and some of them I'm going to be remaking and this one is relevant uh, it was one of my most controversial ones and I never had actually a video with so many views uh, I had about 400 views or whatever and it was a, a video I made about my obesity and I was about 40 kilos heavier than I am now, I think. And um, this was a, a video about why I don't date or would never date obese men, despite being obese or um, fat fetishists. And it was really controversial because people that I was seriously reducing my dating chances, that I uh, shouldn't reject uh, people that want to love me, and uh, that lots of people fall in love with the body, uh, with the person, and then uh, with the body, and then with the person, uh, that, uh, that I am being... Uh, prejudice because I wouldn't date an obese man and again I explained all the reasons why I wouldn't want to date an obese man and why I wouldn't want to date a fat fetishist and I'd rather be alone and have high standards than date someone that will not hold me accountable for my health and will not try to get me to be healthy now I know that my problem is insulin related and I'm losing a lot of weight, but back then I didn't know what was the problem. And I wanted to keep on losing weight and I wanted to keep on exercising. And so at the time I thought, you know what, I'd rather be single than date men that would date me. And um, thankfully now I have a healthy relationship. Uh, there's someone that I like, but that person doesn't want me to stay fat forever and uh you know lots of people would say but if he loves you he wouldn't want to change you no that's not it if he loves you he wants you to be healthy and that's the point of the the thing with uh not wanting a fat fetishist and not want an obese man i want someone that wants the best version of me and uh, now this isn't the best version of me and I want someone that is striving to be better and striving for me to become someone better and uh, yes in this case it's not yeah it's, it's not psychologically better because in my case it's not my brain that is causing my you know because I don't have um, yeah okay i do have some problems with eating but they are because i'm not hungry and stuff like that they're not control related they're not i don't binge eat i don't force myself to starve i don't uh purge 
the problem is I'm really not hungry and I try to eat and I forget to eat and I, I fail to understand hunger signals. And usually only when I'm about to faint or have hypoglycemic attacks, I eat and uh, sometimes I, it's like I don't feel hunger and um, I need to force myself to drink ginger cinnamon tea to try to be able to eat more. So this is not so much a psychological issue, it's physical and uh, I don't feel hunger and uh, so yes I do have some sort of eating disorder but it's not mental health in terms of uh, that's why this change is merely physical and uh, but at the time I didn't know I didn't know I thought uh, it was because I was under eating my metabolism was holding on to fat and now I know that my metabolism would hold on to fat whether I eat or don't eat because everything my body ingests and I forgot to take the medication and now I've, I've already drank my milk a little though. Well, never mind. So every thing I eat, my body absorbs because the insulin a rush causes my body to process sugars at an alarming speed and my body is not using all the energy so if my body is not using all the energy what it's going to do it's going to use whatever it needs to use for the level of activity that I'm doing at the moment and it's going to store the rest therefore what however much I eat it doesn't matter if I under eat what my body is going to do it's going to reduce the the expenditure needs of the body shutting down for instance menstruation and all needless or uh, um less uh, important less crucial functions to use less calories so it keeps on storing and storing and storing and um, so yeah, it doesn't make, because I don't overeat, it doesn't get me to morbidly obese levels, but it does, however, keep me obese and makes the process of, of losing weight hard. And whenever I exercise, I need to exercise more than the average person and all these things. And um, thank God I don't have insulin resistance. But I could, and I, uh, and I could, and uh, I will likely someday have it because uh, it's genetic, and uh, my grandfather had it, and uh, my grandmother had it. Well, and I think one of them was uh, type one diabetes, but it doesn't matter. This is uh, already in the family, and uh, so my hypoglycemia, my excess insulin can cause me to someday become insulin resistant regardless of whether I'm slim or whether I'm fat I am at high risk of becoming diabetic so all this to say that this at this point I know what the thing that is wrong but if I didn't and even knowing what's wrong, I don't want to date a uh, obese man or fat fetishists because obese men tend to, you know, not want to lose weight or when they try to give up on themselves. Not only that, they're people with low self esteem and they need other people to val other people to validate them. And I, th I believe that if you want to be in a relationship, you have to be healthy with yourself. And I know it may be a little hypocritical because uh, before this year I didn't, I wasn't well and I didn't understand that part. I, I had to heal to understand that to be able to be in a relationship and to be able to be in a meaningful relationship, you have to love yourself first and you have to be in a good place with yourself to be able to give love to someone. And now I understand part of the reason why I would never date a fat fetishist or an obese man 
because this these people are one is living through food because he doesn't love himself and so chops food up their mouth all day long and they don't care about themselves and the other one is living vicariously through someone else and uh this is not self-love this is obsessive this is not healthy and the thing is if i dated either of them i would end up becoming morbidly obese unhealthy and not well with myself i i want someone that wants me to be healthy and that helps me be healthy someone who has given up on himself or herself is not going to keep me healthy because they want their comfort food they weren't their comfort zone and of course you're going to make disgusting food for them you're going to eat it yourself and those habits pass to you they pass to your children it's not a good thing and that's not the kind of family that i want and so no 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 obese man for me i'd rather die single than date an obese man not because i am fat phobic or anything because I know that the kind of lifestyle leads the rest of the family and sucks the family into a black hole. And the, when there's someone who is morbidly obese in the family or extremely overweight, this tends to suck up the rest of the family and all the family tends to have the same unhealthy diet, the same unhealthy habits, and all tend to gain weight. So I don't want that. And for the same reason, I wouldn't want to date a fat fetishist because they don't care about you. They don't love you. They love your body. And yes, I know some of the comments did say that some people start looking at the body and then they love you. Uh, but uh, that's not what I want for me. And thank God I have someone that wants me to be healthy. And uh, I don't need any of that now. But even if I needed a partner, I would never want this. And I don't think that you should settle for less than what you believe you deserve just because you don't have a chance at happiness. Look, just because you don't believe you can be happy, just because you don't believe that you deserve a certain someone, it doesn't mean you should settle. You shouldn't settle for anything less than what you think you deserve. And if you think you don't deserve what you really want, you must strive to become someone who is worth what you look for in a person. If you're not happy with yourself, that will lead you to settle for less than perfect. You need someone you connect to. You need someone to, that holds you to high standards and tries to help you be the best version of you. And someone who fetishizes your body, someone who doesn't love himself or herself, is not going to make you happy. So ultimately, what you need to do is make sure to stay away from those people. Fetishists are not happy. Obese men are not healthy. And you're not a therapist. And you don't have to put up with someone that you know is going to hold you back just because you have a poor chance of getting a husband or a wife. You shouldn't. It's better to be single than live in a miserable relationship. So, look, no one is perfect. I'm well aware of it. But to be with someone, you have to love that person. You have to understand that person better than anyone else. You have to share common interests and it should never be a relationship with someone who is sick and someone who doesn't love himself and um you should never settle for anything less than what you deserve just because you're scared of being alone 
Trust me, I was there. I was scared of being alone. But even as I was scared of being alone forever, I never get involved with someone that just wanted me because I was a bees or someone just because he liked me and uh, I didn't have a chance to date someone else. So I date another bees man. And um, no, that's not how it works. You need to love the person. You need to connect to the person. And it's hard, and it's hard. And if I happen to fall in love with an obese man, a man that happened to be obese, I wouldn't marry that person until that person started losing massive amounts of weight and showing that he got into a healthy relationship with his or her body and was capable of losing weight. Because I... I want someone who is healthy and someone who is healthy recognizes that there is a problem with their body that needs to be tackled. I want someone who is mature and responsible to raise kids with and have a family with. And a man who cannot take care of his own health is not going to be a good father, is not going to be a good husband or a good partner. I'm sorry. If you have mental issues that are keeping you from loving yourself, you're not a good partner. You know, you need to have self-esteem. And yes, some people have low self-esteem because they've had hardships in life and they don't believe that they can be happy. But that's not the same kind of issues. Those issues stem from, from bad experience in life. Obese people completely let go of themselves most part some have health issues but for the most part they completely let themselves go and i don't want that for me yes i am obese but i over exercise and up until now i couldn't lose the weight now i know why and uh, as you can see i'm losing a lot of weight and my face is changing my body's changing but I didn't want to put someone through my own personal issues until I solved them. And I solved them and I'm well with myself. And I wouldn't want that for me because if I don't want, um, it's like if I am not, if I don't want to be a burden on someone else, I don't want someone else to be a burden on me. When you are in a relationship, you need to be equals intellectually in terms of, you know, you need a relationship where you give and you take and you give and you take. You can't be both uh, takers, both givers, um, or, you know, you can't be a taker and a giver. You have to be both givers and takers at the same time. You have to share each other. To You know, you have to help each other grow. And you can't be dependent em emotionally on that person and, uh, you know, basically leech off that person's energy. You need to both be able to give that person and take. And I think that someone who has let himself or herself go is not capable of giving you what you need. And likely, the more you give that person, the more that person is going to take. And eventually, you'll turn out to become like that person. And I don't want that for me. And I wouldn't want that for the person that I love. So before you can be in a relationship, you need to be healed. And uh, I think the part of me that says I'm not going to settle for anyone is the part of me that was still healthy. and. I think it is important to never settle for anyone. That's the bottom line. Never, ever settle. I'd rather be single until my 50s than settle and be miserable for three years with someone, resent that person. And, uh, you know, I don't care uh, whether my body says what I'm doing or whether it reflects my effort. I don't want someone because uh, I don't have a chance at other people. That's not going to satisfy me. That's not... 
I know what it is to be in to have a meaningful relationship and uh I'm not settling for anything less than someone that I love and connect on a deep level. And I don't believe I could ever connect with someone who doesn't respect his own body and his own health and therefore I'd never date someone who is obese and for the same reason I would never date someone who fetishizes obese women because these people have some something that is broken with them and uh, a lot of people did comment that how about those that wouldn't date obese women are they being you know also fetishizing slim women or discriminating your body it's completely different because it is healthy for a man to like slim women or average women because those are women who are healthy and will be producing healthy offspring and it is most desirable that women appear healthy and slim therefore it is genetic imperative and it is a biological call that men should prefer slim or average women so in that sense it's not discriminatory it's biological and men that feel attracted to these women usually are have that thing broken they they fetishize women they they have something in their head that is not working properly yes it is possible to not usually like these women and fall in love with them but these people are rare exceptions and usually they will want you to lose weight and better yourself and ultimately in that case i don't mind a relationship but uh again you have to be able to distinguish between fetishists and people who love you for you, who you are and want you to improve and will not be encouraging you bad habits and i that's the main reason why i'm remaking this video it's because I think it will help other women not to settle for people who will not help them better themselves. And so that's it. Thank you for listening to this video. And I know it's a little controversial, but to me it is important. And it's an important subject. And you can see from other videos, I'm much more coherent now. I'm much healthier. I respect myself and I am aware of my limitations I am aware of my needs and trust me trust me Hashem will bring someone to you you just have to work on bettering yourself and eventually you will find someone you deserve you don't have to settle for mediocrity and you don't have to be mediocre yourself just work on yourself and Hashem will help you, but you have to work on yourself. So that's it for today. Bye-bye, and I'll talk to you in the next video.